Yeah. Anyway, that's a good way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> We're down here at Cali College in uh, Bob Moffitt's uh, training room here at the college, and he's going to teach us a little bit about some pipe beveling, um, something we don't ever do, you know, pretty much in our shop. We don't have the have an indexer or rotator like this, but this is like the bee's knees right here, and I can't wait for him to show us this here. So tell us a little bit about it, Bob. But well, Frank, being in the pipe trades, you want to make time and speed, you want to make some money, do some repeatable processes. Let's say that I had 100 flanges to 90s to weld up. Yeah. Well, I could chuck the flange into the positioner, the rotator, and I could put the I could fit the 90 on there. And I could spin that weld. I mean, spin it means I'm I'm welding probably a hard wire root, MIG root with short arc at about 10 o'clock or so and the pipe turning away from me. Mm -hmm. And I could put a, a flux core filling cap and I can make that weld in 10 minutes or less mm -hmm. drinking coffee and goofing off and reading the newspaper in between <laughs> passes seriously it's quick yeah. and so you want that hot repeatable process and but uh, we use it in here for our pipe preparation so we would cut a a full joint of pipe would come in 20 footers 40 footers we would take them off and we we would use the hand crank H&M or Matthew Deerman. We got, we have two to 12 inch and now, I mean, you could put oxyacetylene or plasma on there so we could do the with uh, carbon steel or stainless steel. We'll cut them into one foot long training sections. I leave one end square, always square. And that is so that when we put it in the jaws over here, once we get through putting two of the one footers together and make the weld, we grade the weld, mm -hmm. we cut just the weld out. Mm -hmm. So we end up with a bunch of rib cutting right next to the toe of the weld so we make efficient use of the pipe. But this is our method of beveling uh, and we can still use oxyacetylene on there as well mm -hmm. if we get into a thickness that exceeds the cut capacity of the plasma and it's laboring a long cut. We'll just switch it out to oxyacetylene. But mm -hmm. think of it this way. Think of it, you know, oxyacetylene we said were like 5,800 degrees or so. How about 30,000 degrees plus? Yeah. It's like a supersonic needle just going right through this pipe, and it's kind of cool to watch. Yeah. It's a good process for us in the training. If you're going to be serious of getting into pipe, that's, you need yeah. to probably look at that. It'll pay for itself quickly. Oh, yeah. So let's go over here and make some cuts. Frank, how'd you do on your cut? I think I made a mistake. I don't know what it is yet, Let's though. See. Tone change, Bob told me. Well, you got around and you finished your cut. That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. You came right. back yeah, into yeah, like yeah. a dead airspace, and then you're just yeah, you're yeah, not yeah. doing much. So I didn't mess up. Are you up? talking about that little dimple right there? Yeah, that's the start right well, there. Well, you can't well through that, then you know, I'll be good, yeah. You know, yeah. But look at, the, look at the cut quality. I mean, we're going pretty yeah. quick. Now, this is a nitrided type surface. This it doesn't look like much, but you've got some stuff on here that needs to be cleaned up. Mm -hmm. So we're doing code pipe procedures and we're going to do like TIG roots and whatever, mm -hmm. MIG, you stick, it doesn't, you still need to clean this. Yeah. But it's real simple to clean. Check mm -hmm. this out. I mean, we can do it real quick. I'll just come over here with the old buffing wheel and clean this thing up. Actually, yeah. I've hit those with wire wheels. Yeah? I've hit them with wire wheels. If we're going and well, doing it correctly, we start out and we do a roll cone on the inside because we mm -hmm. need to clean this. Get all the dross off of you it. You can't TIG weld through that. It's yeah. not good. We clean up the inside down to pure white metal about 
quarter to half back. We clean the outside, we clean this, we put the root face on last. And then we fit them up, whatever, whatever process is gonna dictate your gap and What's your land. What's a root face? The root face is a flat spot. Okay. In, the old, in the olden days, they uh -huh. called it the land. The land. A landing. landing. Yeah. That's and I, I've worked with some old guys, and they put, they, when they get through cutting their pot, they put it on with a file. Okay. What, actually, with the way they operated the file was, uh, they'd get up overhead here. I don't have a file out, but they'd get up overhead, and they'd kind of hold on to the file this way, and they'd sit here and just rake it in there and pivot the file. Mm. It's crazy. I mean, it went in there nice. If I had a bunch of design work and a bunch of tubes to cut, I'd probably be interested in, you know, you somehow get it to somebody had some stuff like this i mean you can make some repeatable dimensionally perfect good stuff Absolutely. and then not a lot of cleaning afterwards mm -hmm. so i guess if you got to cut pipe that's the way to do it right there get you a that's technically called a positioner you know but uh, get a positioner like that with an indexable chuck on it and you can chuck this pipe up and sit there and just look how i mean perfectly straight that is so anyway, if you're gonna cut pipe, you heard it from Bob, this is the way to go right here. You need to think about uh, productivity and, and getting as much material through your shop or whatever, this is definitely the way to go. Definitely a lot easier than cutting by hand. So one of the biggest things we've learned here is that, you know, setting yourself up, you know, getting getting everything set right. You know, getting your, your, uh, your position in, in a good spot, getting uh, some kind of repeatable result. Oh and then uh you know just keep everything make sure that you clean and prep everything right you know that's part of the prep process for getting a good weld started and uh you know well anyway i hope this was valuable to you guys and uh make sure to like and subscribe and uh follow my buddy bob too while you're at it um anyway thanks a lot guys